What is up? Welcome to the episode. Today we're going to be chatting about a delicious topic, coffee. So we're going to dig into the three primary factors to consider when it comes to coffee consumption, which are timing, so when you drink it, amount, so how much you drink, as well as the half-life of caffeine which translates to your genetic clearance rate, meaning how quickly or slowly you clear caffeine from your bloodstream because it does vary between individuals and that variance can be quite large. We're also going to identify exactly what to look for and how to identify your personal tolerance. And it's worth mentioning that I'm not going to touch on the potential health benefits or potential detriments specifically for a few reasons. One is caffeine, which is found in coffee, is clearly a very safe drug. And secondly, even if it did have some minor health detriments, which I don't think that it does in moderate quantities, we likely wouldn't stop drinking it anyway. So practically speaking, it's essentially a mute point. Also, a lot of research done on coffee intake is epidemiological in nature. And epidemiology is the study of distribution, patterns, and determinants of health and disease in defined populations, which is super cool and all, but there are just too many confounding factors to consider. For example, when you're looking at data from large populations, it's really difficult to separate out confounding factors. So for example, if you examine how much coffee people drink in Sweden versus Spain, let's say, and you find that folks that live in Spain drink on average two additional cups of coffee per day versus folks in Sweden. And the lifespan of people in Spain happens to be three years shorter than the Swedish lifespan. Can we say that coffee shortens lifespan? Absolutely not, because there are so many other factors at play in regards to a lifestyle that contribute to how long folks live, like what are smoking habits like between the countries? Nutrition, sleep, exercise, general movement. There are tons of aspects outside of solely coffee consumption to consider. So instead, we're going to examine the timing, the amount, and the half-life because those are the most relevant aspects to consider when you're figuring out how much coffee or caffeine works best for you as an individual. Let's touch on half-life first because it's a nice precursor to understand timing and amount. So the half-life of caffeine is really straightforward. It just means how long it takes for half of the caffeine consumed to be cleared from your bloodstream. And the average half-life of caffeine for folks is about six to eight hours. So what does that actually mean? It means that if you drink a cup of coffee at 9 a.m., which on average has about 200 milligrams of caffeine in it, six to eight hours later, you're going to have 100 milligrams of caffeine still in circulation. Half of 200 milligrams, hence the term half-life. Six to eight hours after that, you're going to have 50 milligrams of caffeine in your bloodstream. And six to eight hours after that, you're going to have 25 milligrams floating around in your body. So the six to eight hour half-life just means that you cut the total milligrams of caffeine in half every six to eight hours, that's it. Now, like I mentioned briefly before, half-life varies a lot between individuals because some folks clear caffeine quite quickly and others it takes far longer. So for example, some people's bodies are so efficient at clearing caffeine that they may have a half-life of three to four hours, while others it can take up to 36 hours. So there is massive variation here. And so it's really important that you assess your personal tolerance because averages are averages, they are not you. For example, if the average person can handle 20 minutes of sun exposure at a certain latitude without burning, that doesn't mean that you can tolerate 20 minutes of sun exposure at that given latitude you may burn. And so it's important that you listen to your body and what it's telling you in regards to coffee and caffeine. And we're gonna dig into how to identify the factors that you'll want to consider shortly. So that's half-life in a nutshell. And as I'm sure you can see now, your individual clearance rate is going to impact timing considerations. Because if you're a slow caffeine detoxifier, you don't want to have coffee later in the day, right? Because that's going to impair your sleep. 
Now the amount also plays an important role because you can't think to yourself, okay, well, I'm a slow caffeine detoxifier, so I'll just game the system via drinking as much coffee as I want early in the day because then I'll clear all of that caffeine by the time I want to go to bed. Unfortunately, that can still backfire. Reason being is, if one cup of coffee has 200 milligrams of caffeine in it and your personal half-life is 12 hours, let's say, if you drink four cups, even by 8 a.m. in the morning, that's a total of 800 milligrams, which means that 12 hours later, so at 8 p.m., you're still going to have 400 milligrams floating around in your bloodstream, which is equivalent to two cups of coffee. So not only does your clearance rate matter, the timing and the amount matter as well. Just because you drink your coffee early doesn't give you free reign to consume as much as you want, unfortunately. I wish that were the case, I love coffee. Now, how do you tell if you're drinking too much coffee or consuming too much caffeine? The easiest and most immediate feedback are going to be things like feelings of anxiousness and the jitters right after consuming too large of an amount. And I think that pretty much everyone knows what that feels like. Not fun. That is a clear indicator that you overdid it. Another really clear sign that you took in too much caffeine or coffee is digestion. So coffee is notorious for making people run to the bathroom. And it's one thing to have coffee goose your digestion along via just getting things moving, but it's a whole nother thing to have something like diarrhea, for example. And we all know the difference. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend letting it get to that point. Now, sleep is without a doubt the linchpin in terms of coffee consumption as a whole, meaning as long as the amount of coffee that you're drinking isn't impacting your sleep negatively, as well as digestion, have at it. But as soon as your sleep is impaired, I'd highly recommend scaling things back. And it's important to remember that just because you're drinking coffee early in the day doesn't mean that it can't impact your sleep that night due to the half-life concept, AKA clearance rates and the amount that you consume. So that's key to keep an eye on. Now, some folks will say, I can drink a cup of coffee and go straight to bed. And this always makes me cringe because it's such a clear cut sign of severe sleep debt. Meaning if you can drink a cup of coffee and go to sleep, you're so sleep deprived that your body's need for sleep is straight up just overriding that stimulatory effect from caffeine, and that is no bueno. I've seen this a lot in shift workers because I've worked with a ton of nurses, and you know, in this case, it is what it is, right? We need these folks in our communities, and I'm super grateful to all of the amazing shift workers that we have. Unfortunately, their health just takes a hit because we are not nocturnal animals. But if you're not a shift worker and you're falling into this category, get your sleep routine back on track ASAP because your job doesn't require voluntary sleep debt. And therefore you don't wanna make those health trade-offs if your career doesn't require it. Now, some folks just believe that they're night owls and personally, I'm not even sure that true night owls exist. And here is why. What are quote unquote night owls doing when the sun goes down? They're engaging with technology via light exposure. And if for some reason we didn't have access to electricity, I have a sneaky suspicion that they would start to fall asleep a lot earlier because what are you gonna do from 10 p.m. until two or three in the morning? And the reason I say this is because it's a two-fold mechanism, meaning what they're doing is keeping them up via mental stimulation and so is their lighting environment via physical stimulation. For example, let's say they're watching television, which is stimulating them because it's entertaining and interesting. And secondly, the bright blue light from the television is telling their internal body clock, which is called the suprachiasmatic nucleus or SCN for short. It's saying, hey, SCN, be up, be alert. It's daytime due to that light exposure. Because before electricity, we didn't even have an option to get out of sync with our internal day and night rhythms because when the sun went down, fire and the stars were the brightest things that we had access to. Camping is a really cool example of this because whenever you go camping, you likely go to sleep earlier than you would have normally when you're at home because of how your lighting environment impacts your body clock. And just because there's nothing else to do, right? Like you might as well hit the hay. 
So when it comes to coffee, the half-life timing and amount matter and the key things that are going to give you feedback telling you whether to change any or all of these factors are the jitters, potential anxiousness, digestion, and most importantly, sleep. And fortunately, with a little bit of tweaking and experimentation, you can figure out exactly how much coffee and or caffeine is the right fit for you. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one -on -one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. Follow me up on Instagram at n1fitness, on TikTok at the n1fitness. Yes, I am on TikTok now. And feel free to friend me on Facebook at Marcus Sadu. Thanks so much to the folks that have taken an extra 15 to 30 seconds out of their day to leave a review on their favorite podcast platform. I truly appreciate it. Lastly, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you found this useful and I will catch you on the next episode. See ya.